We have found direct evidence of caves on some celestial bodies beyond Earth, mainly on the Moon and Mars. It is very likely that there are even more hidden caves on other celestial bodies. Leave your like and subscribe here on the channel and let's explore these eerie caves together. The caves on the Moon and Mars were discovered because some of them have visible entrances, like holes clearly detectable from space, similar to a secret entrance found in a vast desert. On the Moon, lava tube caves are the most common type which are like underground highways that once guided the flow of lava. In 2009, NASA discovered these mysterious cavities on the moon for the first time, although it was not the first mission to detect such holes. However, it was certainly one of the most successful missions, having photographed about 278 holes, several of which may be entrances to lava tube caves. These caves are like dark doors on the lunar surface, waiting to be explored. Future explorers will unravel the secrets of these mysterious caves. The caves have an average diameter of 30 meters, although some are slightly larger, but the overall difference is not significant. All images of the lunar caves shown in the videos were captured by the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter and are detailedly documented on NASA's official website with the precise location of each known cave marked on a map, like a treasure map guiding future explorers. One of the clearly photographed entrances to lava tube caves is located in the Sea of Tranquility, which was once a vast lava field and is now a cold gray surface. This place is like an ancient lunar wilderness, full of historical traces. The Sea of Tranquility is situated on the visible side of the moon, the side that is always facing Earth. This special cave entrance has a diameter and depth of about 10 meters, almost like a large portal to the interior of the moon. These images show the entrance from different angles and lighting conditions seen from the side. The lunar pit reveals steep walls and deep shadows that indicate the opening to a large room. The different layers of the pit are clearly visible from this angle, as if we were reading the geological history of the moon. There is another notable pit in the Sea of Serenity, which is actually a combination of two pits of different heights. The larger one is about 30 meters in diameter, while the smaller one is about 15 meters in diameter and has a total depth of 25 meters, looking like two large interconnected pits on the lunar surface. In this image, we see a lava tube cave entrance about 60 meters in diameter and 40 meters deep, located in the Marius Hills, one of the areas most densely dotted with volcanic features on the moon, with volcanic hills approximately 350 meters high, like a small volcanic town on the moon. This is the pit in the Marius Hills, photographed at three different times, under different lighting conditions, revealing the steep side walls and the mysterious entrance. The exposed opening reveals that there might be a quite large room below, but the exact size is still unknown. This image shows one of the few caves located on the far side of the moon, which is always turned away from Earth. This specific cave has an internal diameter of about 10 meters and a depth of 5 meters. Thanks to the angle of the sun, we can see the floor of the cave and car-sized rocks which look like gigantic monoliths forgotten by time, resting in the embrace of the moon. This cave is located in the Lacus Mortis, a basalt plain in the northeastern region of the moon. It has an internal diameter of about 170 meters and a total depth of 60 meters. It is also the only cave with a clearly defined suspended part, like a natural lunar bridge connecting two different worlds. Of the 278 pits discovered so far, only 29 have suspended parts. Of course, there are even larger caves, such as one located in the Copernicus Mountains, with an internal diameter of approximately 380 meters, almost like a giant sports stadium on the moon. Another notable cave is located in the center of the Mare Fecunditatis, with a diameter of about 120 meters and a depth of 40 meters. These caves are not just large impressions on the lunar surface, but also have natural ramps that resemble natural slides. In the southwest of the Mare Fecunditatis, there is a smaller cave with a clear suspended part, but the total diameter of the pit and the opening is about 80 meters, with a steep central part with a diameter of about 15 meters and a total depth of 50 meters. These images show most of the pits covered so far, with each image having a width of about 20 meters, allowing for an easy comparison of the size of the pits. Among them, the Lacus Mortis pit is the largest and also clearly shows that all these pits are relatively regular in shape, but there are irregular pits on the moon, such as those without steep and circular walls. These pits seem like natural traps, and each one tells a part of the long and winding history of the moon in the universe. Now let's talk about the Copernicus pits, which are particularly interesting. 
Located at the base of the Copernicus crater, with a diameter of 90 kilometers, 32 pits have been found, representing about 12% of the total known lunar pits, as if they were an underground labyrinth of the moon. However, the region with the highest number of discovered pits so far is an area about 30 kilometers in diameter, near the Kepler crater. This area was photographed by the Apollo 16 mission and contains 62 pits, meaning that 2% of the known pits are located in this region. Among these pits, Kepler 1 and Kepler II are particularly notable. They are close to each other and separated by a natural bridge 19 meters long and 10 meters wide, but they may be connected by an underground tunnel. This structure is common in the Kepler pits region, where many pits have similar structures, with one pit located near another, possibly connected by underground tunnels, as if they were part of a system of underground passages of the moon. Another densely populated area of pits is the Tympanum Crater, with a diameter of 85 kilometers and 24 pits many of which have natural ramp entrances, as if they were secret passages to the moon's underground world. The Provolva Crater, with a diameter of 75 kilometers, also has many pits, 26 in total, but most of them are quite small, with an average diameter of only 5 meters, like small puddles on the lunar surface. In comparison, the pits of the Vallis Crater have an average diameter of 27 meters, those of the Goethe Crater have an average diameter of 63 meters, and those in the Copernicus region have an average diameter of 50 meters. The four mountainous rings previously mentioned represent 52% of the known pits on the moon, raising questions about whether these locations were more observed than other lunar regions, or if geological processes led to the formation of a large number of pits in these relatively small areas. The other 48% of the known pits also tend to be part of clusters, but are smaller in scale, and compared to the four largest, seem insignificant. This suggests that lunar pits often appear in groups, although this is not a certainty. Pits have been found at almost all latitudes of the Moon, except in the high-latitude regions near the North and South Poles. However, even in these regions, there are some pits, such as the Somberg E pit, which is very close to the South Pole. It is located between the Ring Mountain Somberg, with a diameter of 85 kilometers, and the Ring Mountain Somberg A, with a diameter of 30 kilometers. This pit, has a diameter of about 10 meters, like a small diamond at the south pole of the moon. Pits have also been found near the North Pole, such as those located on the Ring Mountain Philolaus, with a diameter of 70 kilometers. Due to the low angle of the sun in these images, it is not possible to determine if these pits have steep vertical walls. However, they are clearly too deep to be simple impact craters. The total diameter of the pit is about 35 meters, like a deep fissure in the ice of the North Pole. In the future, it is likely that we will find more pits near the North and South Poles of the Moon. However, due to the orientation of the Moon, some areas at the poles are always in shadow, maintaining temperatures consistently below the freezing point, leading scientists to speculate that these areas may contain water ice. Pits like those found in the Sea of Tranquility and the Marius Hills may be entrances to lava tubes acting as mysterious portals on the surface of the moon, sparking the imagination. Although our current knowledge about the internal structure of lunar caves is limited, we do not know what they may reveal. Lunar pits can be surprisingly large, and we still do not know what they contain, but future discoveries may be impressive. The European Space Agency plans to explore these caves closely, and perhaps soon we may see real images from the interior of lunar pits. On the moon, there are structures called rills, and the sinuous ones are particularly interesting because they may be completely collapsed lava tubes that formed a curved path, like a natural sculpture. Vallis Schröteri is the largest sinuous rill on the moon, about 170 kilometers long, looking like a large lunar valley winding across the surface. Among these rills, Hadley Rill is especially notable because it was the only one visited by humans. During the Apollo 15 mission in 1971, astronauts explored this area, leaving behind human footprints on the lunar surface. This is an image captured by the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter that shows the entire path of the mission. If we can confirm that lunar pits are stable enough, they may become ideal locations for human habitation in the future. The thick walls of lava tubes can effectively protect against solar radiation, which, although not lethal in short periods, prolonged exposure increases the risk of cancer. Therefore, the back walls of lunar caves can not only protect against radiation on the moon's surface, but also offer a stable temperature environment as the interior of the caves remains dark and cold, while the moon's surface experiences extreme temperature variations, dropping to 180 degrees Celsius at night and rising to 120 degrees Celsius during the day. Currently, 
we can discover more lunar pits through orbital probes. Although some plans are focused only on exploring the interiors of caves, the actual implementation of these plans may take several years. Leave your like and subscribe here on the channel so you don't miss any mysteries of the universe. Leave your opinion in the comments.